9-11, I was the um, first base coach um, with the New York Mets, and um, on that day, we were actually in Pittsburgh. Um, we had a series coming up with Pittsburgh, and we had flew in uh, when we got the news uh, about what had happened. What actually happens when we got the news of what had happened, you know, um, about the planes going into the, um, the towers, uh, we didn't know that we were staying at a hotel right next door to a federal building. And for some reason, they felt that we were going to be, you know, in some danger, which by itself caused a little panic. And we ended up gathering the team together from the hotel, getting on buses, and driving some miles out on the, the suburbs of Pittsburgh um, to some Motel 6, uh, I forget exactly what the hotel was. <laughs> and we kind of gathered Then We stayed there for about three days, actually, and, until things kind of calmed down a little bit. So uh, we ended up busing back, you know, which was, you know, kind of interesting at that time. Staying in Pittsburgh, um, particularly in the hotel, actually Pittsburgh was a nice city. I, I really enjoyed going there. But I had never been that part of Pittsburgh before. Um, it was different. We were used to staying in hotels that were probably a little more luxurious, you know, at this time. This, we were just happy, you know, um, to be staying somewhere. We had to move out of the hotel we were in. And I think it was more concerned about uh, our safety and our you know, families not knowing where we were, how we were doing. And I think it was the biggest concern at that point. Uh, it, it was difficult at the time being away from family, but, you, know, but, you know, the tragedy. And um, they were really concerned about our safety and, and knowing that we do fly a lot and not knowing how they were going to, you know, take us being around, you know, all the commotion and everything. And I, I think the uncertainty, you know, were they okay, you know, were we okay, were they anyway in the area, and who knows what else is going on. We had very limited information as to what was actually happening. And um, a lot of guys were very uncomfortable with the situation as it was, and our families, when they were able to reach us, um, they weren't at home, but at the time we were, you know, ordered to stay where we were, to don't move and, until things had cleared up a little bit. And I think the uncertainty really was more, you know, uh, uncomfortable than actual living in Pittsburgh itself. When did we think it was right to play baseball? I think that was the big discussion. Uh, it was, actually was a big debate. Um, as players, we didn't know if it was appropriate for us to play baseball. We didn't know if we were emotionally ready to play baseball. I mean, most of us spend most of our lives here, you know, in New York, um, and we become very attached to the communities. And to play baseball when there was so much, you know, pain and suffering going on, we didn't know if that was the appropriate time to do it. Um, remember, baseball is just a game. It is a game. And, and we, even though we were getting paid for it, it was still a game. It was entertainment. And to play baseball in that, under those circumstances, I, it was very uncomfortable. You know, it's very uncomfortable. I don't think the people, the players didn't know how the people would, you know, react. They didn't know how they would accept it. They didn't know how they were going to respond to actually play it. And there was some hesitation about playing. There was some discussion about whether we even should play or not. Some wanted to play, some did not. Um, as it turned out, we found that baseball was much more than a game. It was much more. It was part of, for lack of a better term, the healing process. It was, life goes on. And it was, I think it was a symbolic of the courage you know, that the city showed during that time and that we were going to continue life and, and, and going on. And baseball was part of that. And as the game progressed, we became happy that we actually did play, even when we did not want to play. And the results was, it was tremendous. Now, coming back to Shea the first day was frightening because, as you know, Shea was the, it, it was like the, the, the depot distribution center for you know, the delivering you know, supplies to downtown to the firemen you know, and, and the rescue people. And we were very involved in that. And it was sad, but at least it gave us a sense of purpose that we were doing something, that we weren't just baseball players. That we really were part of the community. And it gave us an opportunity to, 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 to help and be a part and to the little bit that we did do. It wasn't a lot, but it did show that we did really care and the guys um, led by Bobby V. Bobby Valentine was outstanding, and I think that he led us you know, in the right direction at times. That's what good leadership is supposed to do. Um, so we just followed his lead and you know, unpacking crates and delivering water you know, and packing. And as sad as it may sound, it actually made us feel good you know, that we weren't taking. We were actually giving something back. The, the first game back, I, I think of all the things I've encountered in baseball was probably the most emotional game I've ever been in in my life. You know, I played in some World Series, I played in some playoffs games, won a few, lose a few. But this game was probably the most emotional game I've ever been in. 
um, with the stars coming back, you know, singing God Bless America and all the, you know, just the, the performances that they put on was tremendous. But then the game itself, um, we played hard. The Braves played hard and the fans actually enjoyed it. It gave them two hours of relief to get away from the reality of the tragedy that had happened. And we were part of that made us feel good. But I think the biggest part of that game was the actual winning the ball game on a Mike Piazza's home run. I've been in a lot of ball games and that is the first game that I actually watched the opposing team and the, the emotions. It almost as if they were saying, we're glad you won. And that stuck with me for the longest. I remember watching Chipper Jones and looking at his face. And if it had not been, if people hadn't gotten the wrong impression, they probably would have applauded. You know, it was an outstanding game, an outstanding finish, and it was great for the city at that time. You know, and we, we, we talk about that game and, and the stars that were here. We had Liza Manelli who came out and performed, had Donna Ross who came out and performed. And we all know Donna Ross, by the way, is one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite stars. Um, and um, it, was, it, it, it was phenomenal. It, I, I think it was a, a, a fitting beginning for just a beautiful day. And I think that all of New York really enjoyed it. Well, Mike, we know Mike's a New Yorker. And, you know, he, he's a New Yorker. And um, I, I think, I don't think that is anything that he tried to do. He's just be the professional that he was. And he's the guy that's been, we've counted on for many, many days to, to give us that big hit. And I, that might have been the biggest hit of his career. He may argue different, but to me, I think that might have been the biggest hit of his career. And he should be proud that he did it at that point in time. I forget the exact score. I forget the exact score, but it was high. Um, normally when balls are hit, the stands really go crazy. At this point, I think that they anticipate the ball going out. Now in the dugout was a different thing. We were like just quiet. We were waiting and the far as the ball go, the more we got up, the more we got up, and then all of a sudden, it's out. And then that's when you see the, the, the jubilation, the guys just started cheering. We were actually fans at that point. You know, we weren't players and teammates, we were fans. We were just like all the other 53,000 people that were here. We were fans and I think it's just a great moment. Um, as athletes, we are sometimes put on pedestals and, and all, almost viewed as unhuman. You know, we, we are superhuman people and, and we are not. You know, we are normal people who have normal lives with, with families. And when you see firemen and, and rescue people, when they come out and they're, and, and, the services that they do, they're the real people that, that actually makes a difference you know, in this world. Yeah, a ball game is fine. I enjoy a great ball game, but if we don't play baseball today or tomorrow, life goes on and the firemen and rescue people, they're still there to service you know, the people. And I think that the, the credit you know, and, and, and the applause that they got at that, point, at that time was well deserved. I'm not saying I don't appreciate an applaud every now and then. But you have to keep it in perspective, you know, like I said before, this is just a game, you know, and um, thanks to the firemen and the rescue people, the policemen and, and, and everyone that was involved during, you know, um, that tragedy, um, they deserve every bit of applause that they got.